Jeremiah. Was a bullfrog? <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Jeremiah is one of the prophets, right? Bill told us about this morning. There was how many prophets? Sixteen. Sixteen, which we could argue. Sixteen is a good number, though, because because I'll I'll give Bill the sixteenth one he's talking about because we talked about it this morning, right? So who are they? Can anyone name the sixteen prophets? Extra credit for a confirmation student. Without looking in your Bible. Hey guys. You can name all 16. See me after worship. Seriously? You can't name them all. Who are the, th- the four major ones? Isaiah. Ezekiel. Daniel. That's the one I'll argue with on you. Whether or not he's actually a prophet or not. And Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And here's the thing that you have to realize. right? Daniel will read next week. Right? That is next week, right? Daniel, we get a story from Daniel to start us off in Advent. And Daniel would have been one of the people that Jeremiah was writing to. Think about that for a moment, right? Because Daniel wrote this letter here in the 29th chapter of the, of the book of Jeremiah. He wrote it to those who were already in exile in Babylon. And, and that's where Daniel was in exile, in Babylon. And the things that he did, he did for King Nebuchadnezzar, which he talks about here in the letter that Jeremiah wrote. But Jeremiah wrote this letter to those who are already in exile. Which means what? If there's people already in exile. Somebody said it. Say it louder. I heard it. Maybe I'm just hearing voices. There's more to come. Maybe they're not all in exile yet. But Jeremiah is writing to those who are already there. And what does Jeremiah say to them? Some words that we all need to take to heart and and profoundly use in our lives, right? I'm sure most of you have probably heard this one verse in here that gets completely used out of context, like another one of my favorite verses, Jeremiah 29, 11, which is, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for you to prosper and to hope, right? It gets completely used out of context. Because it's not about, I'm I'm sorry to bust your bubbles all here this morning, but it's not about you. Right? You, You there is not you. Alone. Jeremiah says to those who are in exile, God says to all y'all, I have a plan for all of you. A plan for hope and a future. Not just you individually, but you as a people, I have a plan for. So, It's not just about me, or it's not just about you. It's about all of us together. It's about what God calls us to all together. And what does God say through Jeremiah to these people in Babylon? It's right there in like verse 7. Say it louder. He'll bring you out after 70 years, which is how long, really? That's basically two generations we're talking about here. So you're going to be in exile for this long, which does that sound like good news? You're going to be in Babylon for 70 years. Actually, it is. There's an end. I can tell you exactly when God is going to bring me out of this land. I know exactly the day that God is going to free me from captivity. I know exactly the time that God is going to restore me to everything that I've had before. I might have to wait 70 years for it, but I know exactly when it's coming. It's not, it's not a question. God said 70 years and it's going to be done and he's coming. He's going to restore us to everything that we're supposed to do. So what do we do in the meantime? What do we do in the meantime? What? (laughs) There's, there's young children here. (laughs) We're supposed to build houses and plant gardens and grow food and take wives for our sons and find husbands for our daughters. And here's a question on that. Is Jeremiah telling the Israelites to go in amongst the Babylonians and find wives for their sons and find husbands for their daughters? Meaning, marry with the Babylonians? Intermarriages? Is that what Jeremiah is saying? 
Kurt, Kurt says, probably not. <clears throat> Which is probably a good answer. Because the Israelites would not have, have looked for husbands and wives amongst the people that they were living with. Because we even see stories from, from before where um, Jacob sent one of his servants away back to their homeland to find a wife for Isaac. Right? He didn't want Isaac to marry amongst the people that they were living with, so he sent servants off back to their homeland to find a wife to bring for Isaac to marry. But here's the thing. There's absolutely nothing here that says that Jeremiah wasn't saying to them, intermarry. Because what does else does he say? That's the most important thing for us to glean out of this. Not this 2911 that God has a plan, because we know for a fact that God has a plan for us. Where is it? Verse 6, take wives. Verse 7 is actually the one that I'm looking at. I called it out earlier. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For it's in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you. As I read that this morning, I was like, sounds an awful lot like every pastor that's ever gone to a city they've never been to before. Right? Before we came here, we knew nobody. Well, except for the call committee. Right? Before we went to Texas, we knew nobody. Except for the call committee. Um, right? There's a lot of pastors that do this. And this is talking about when you go someplace, when God sends you someplace, you're supposed to do what? Look out after the welfare of the place that I have sent you. Well, you know what? Bless you. This isn't only about pastors. This is about you too. Because who put you here? Who put you here? God did. God put you here. And God sends you just like he sends all of us. And he wants you to do what? To look after the welfare of the city where I have sent you. Because in looking out for their welfare, you will also look out for your own welfare. So God wants us to do what? Build houses. And plant gardens. I guess we have to plant a garden next year. <laughs> It'll be a weed fest at our house, so, you know, that's... <laughs> to have children and multiply. <coughs> I got a great thumbs up from somebody in the back. I'm not going to tell you who, Earl. Um, find husbands for our daughters. Find wives for our sons. And to look out for the welfare of the city. And to pray for the place that we've been planted. God wants us to go out into the place where we are. And to pray for their welfare. To look to see what needs to be done and to do it. He wants us to take care of the place where he's put us. So that we can be his hands and his feet. A commentary that I listened to and read earlier this week talked about how as, as congregations we want to sit and wait for new people to come. Right? And there's some, there's some visitors with us today. We want to wait for those people to come. We want them to come into our midst and we want them to be what? Just like us. Right? It doesn't matter what they're like, right? It doesn't matter what they are. But in, in some places, they're not going to go looking for anybody and invite them in. They wait for people to come and they want them to be just like them. And that's not what God is telling us to do here in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, he's saying it's our responsibility to go out into the city in which we have been placed. And we are supposed to look at those people and see what their needs are. We're supposed to intermix with them and to pray for them and to look to see what's happening there. And to look out for their welfare. Because in doing good deeds for them, God is going to resupply us and give us more and more. So that we can continue to go out and be God's hands and feet. God is calling us to live in this world. In this world where he has planted us. And to do his good deed for others. Because I guarantee you there are people in this room right now. That are hurting. And there are people who are in our communities. And in our worlds around us that are hurting. And they can use your help. If that's just a simple hello. Or a simple smile. Or a simple let's go have a coffee so we can talk. Or maybe it's more than that. But the only way we can do that 
is if we engage with the people around us. The only way we can do that is if we live in the place where God has planted us and grow there as he wants us to grow. So let's take Jeremiah's letter to the exiles to heart and know that God is coming for us. That God is going to give us that great coming kingdom. And we need to live here now and be his hands and feet. We need to live here now and look out for the welfare of the cities around us. Are we ready to do that? Are you ready to go and to be his hands and feet? Are you ready to go and pray for the welfare of this city? God is calling you. He goes with you. So go.